Om Shanti and welcome to the special conversation. The topic of our discussion today is being authentic. To discuss this, we have with us Brother Ken from Brazil. Brother Ken is an Australian who's been living in Brazil for many years. He has worked as a business consultant in various big organizations throughout the world. He has also authored several books, 15 books rather, in different languages. He has been a musician and he has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for around 43 years. Presently, he is coordinating the Brahma Kumari centers in South America. Om Shanti. Welcome to the studio, Brother okay, Ken. Om Shanti. Really nice to be here. Really nice to have you here with us again. Nice. Um, you know, we talk about being authentic and there are many people we say there's, it's the buzzword, choose to be authentic, be genuine. What is being authentic? In this world where everything is fake and artificial, is that really possible to be authentic? What's your take? Well, the word means actually being your true self. That's exactly what it means from its roots. Uh, ortho or auto means self. So mm -hmm. being your true self. And the problem is, is that we don't know who the tr true self is to be it. So unless you do that, is you don't have an, any other alternative than to try to be many other things except your true self. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, you see the world in the state that it is. You know, in the, in the ancient Roman theatre, mm -hmm. They used masks on the end of sticks mm -hmm. to represent the different roles. Mm -hmm. So that mask was made of wax. Mm -hmm. And it was easy to do because they just have the mold and they would mold the, the face and then they put it on a stick. And that, that mask was called persona. And mm -hmm. that's where the word person or personality comes from, from the mask. And the word sincere because in Latin, sera is, uh, is wax and sin means without. So sincera in Latin or sincere in English means no mask. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to people to take their masks off because they don't know what it is that's behind it. Who is the real self that holds the mask? They don't know. Mm -hmm. You really put out a very, um, you know, a genuine point that we've been faking it for so long, uh, being something else or someone else, that it's difficult to know the real authentic self. And sometimes people are amazed uh, when they realize it after some time. Yeah, actually my real deep self is an eternal soul, unlimited, <coughs> sorry unlimited mm -hmm. so my real identity is spiritual mm -hmm. but you know we try to live our whole being in a sort of a, a small container which is the body mm -hmm. and the body starts at one point and finishes at another point and so this unlimited being tries to reduce itself to the uh, parameters of the limited ego, mm -hmm. uh, you know, nationality, culture, religion, age, gender, and so on, or degree of beauty, I'm beautiful, I'm the man, I'm ugly, I'm best, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the engineer, I'm the doctor. Mm -hmm. So this unlimited being, mm -hmm. because it doesn't know any other thing, it tries to fit itself in this little container. So imagine if you have a, have a big foot and you try to use a little shoe, right? Imagine if you could make the big foot fit into the little shoe. First of all, it would be very painful. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you would end up becoming deformed. Mm -hmm. So our real self is actually, you know, becomes something else. And bruised also. Bruised and, you know, deformed and, and you know, painful. So existential pain, which is the cause of all other sorts of pains, 
starts because we are an unlimited being trying to live a limited life. You know, you mentioned that and you know, uh, as you mentioned about the masks, people do put on a different mask for a different situation. Yeah. You know, sometimes you've got so many masks Which available. Which mask will I use today? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you think that it's coming from our experiences, past experiences. For example, um, even in this birth, if I've been uh, through a difficult time or I've been uh, being sensitive, something has happened. I put on a mask of being very tough. I put on a mask of, of being some other person, depending on the situation. And putting that mask makes it very easy for me to go through that situation. I said it's, it's really because, you know, like wax is very moldable, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how come in Roman theatre, they, you know, it was very easy to change a mask. You just melt the wax and put it into a different mould. Mm -hmm. Then melt that wax and put it into a different mould. And so because we've been living these masks and we don't know any other way, uh, you know, it's not people's fault. They just don't know how to do it differently. And, and you know, the ego, the, the, the limited ego is very amorphous. It means it sort of shapes itself, it changes. You know, if some bad thing's happening, the ego gets really affected. Then something good happens, the ego gets affected. I have success, oh, I'm great. I have a failure, I'm bad, you know. So we actually live on the surface of ourselves mm -hmm. because we don't know any other way. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, how do I become who I am? Because whatever we are living, the ego, uh, would you define it as something, as something which I'd rather be that I'm not? I don't think it's a, it's a question of rather. Rather imply, implies choice. Mm -hmm. I think if people really knew what they are deeply, they'd have a, at least the tool to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's where it starts. And you know, you, you see all sorts of anomalies, you know, things that are strange in a world where almost everyone is faking it mm -hmm. a lot of the time. You know, we know how to get uh, sympathy from others. We put on a face, you know. <laughs> we know how to help make people suffer. We put on another face. We know how to you know, to change a circumstance and, and we can put on uh, that sort of face. But what happens is, um, I remember, you know, it's, it's really ignorance. <laughs> the problem is not this, the problem is ignorance. So I, I remember a situation, we were preparing for a very big environmental conference. Mm -hmm. In, in Rio in 1992. It was the biggest environmental conference in history. Mm -hmm. and like 120 heads of state went for this. It was organized by the UN. Mm -hmm. And we were doing some programs from the Brahma Kumaris in Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about urban um, environment, you know, how to, the urban ecology, how, do, how can we help so we got a panel of speakers together and one of them, he was from the government, the, the state government, and he was responsible for, and he's on his business card that said, responsible engineer for the control of the atmospheric pollution of the city of Sao Paulo. That was his job title description. Mm -hmm. I like his mask. I'm the, I'm the guy who's in charge of the environmental pollution in this city. I do it. But you know, we can't, it was in those days, it was 1992. So in the, those days, smoking in public was quite normal. It was like, what, how many years ago? 25 years ago, 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the first thing the guy does, we're sitting in a little room, smaller than this space here. And the first thing he does, engineer responsible for the, act, the control of the atmospheric pollution of the city of Sao Paulo, he's smoking a cigarette. So he can't even keep a small room free from pollution, let alone a whole city. But that's not the, the sad thing. The sad thing that he did not see the inconsistency. He didn't realize it was being inconsistent with his role. Mm 
-hmm. and, and so it's really ignorance. And, you know, so you feel, what do you do? You condemn him? No, you feel sorry for him. But I mean, how can you be? You're in charge of the whole city and you can't even keep a room free from smoke. Come on, you know. Mm -hmm. So th that, is the, that is the challenge for all of us. Mm -hmm. You look at what you, you, even let's say you have to be a mother, okay? Just a, that should be what sort of role? How should you be if you're a good mother? Very caring and Very gentle. Ca gentle, caring, loving. Mm. And okay. so you try to be the good mother, <laughs> but you don't know how. To be that. You don't know how to be that all mm. the time. Mm. And so that creates frustration because you don't know. Now, that's why to be authentic, which literally means to be the real self, mm -hmm. you have to know what the real self is in mm -hmm. order to be it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the mask. Mm -hmm. I'm not the thing that's you know, on, the, on the outside. And so life is not just a series of changing one mask to the other, to the other, to the other, to the mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. from birth and to grave, right? Mm -hmm. I have to go back. I am actually the one that, that is holding the, the persona. Mm -hmm. I hold the persona. I hold my personality. So if I hold it, I control it. I can manage it. So. If I take those, let's say, the reins of my life back to the real self, then I can be as the situation requires, rather than pretending to be that. Mm -hmm. um, do you know, you've, you've given us a very beautiful example and the understanding that more often than not, it is the ignorance of that you really are, there's a blind spot. You don't know that how to do it or uh, whether I'm not being genuine or authentic. Um, there is one thing which comes up in people's mind is that when I become my true self, wouldn't I be vulnerable? Wouldn't people make use of me? Because there are all sorts of people. I can't be just, I can't be myself to, you know, my genuine self with everyone. <coughs> so what is your understanding of that? I think that the fake selves that we use, these fake masks are very vulnerable because they don't, don't last, they're inconsistent, they are easily bruised, they don't, you know, you find, you, they, they make us suffer. But if I go back to the real self, that's completely strong. You know, it's completely stable. Mm -hmm. Nothing can touch me if I'm back in my real self, mm -hmm. nothing. And it, not only that, all of the negative around me doesn't reach me because it's sort of, it's like vibrating at a different frequency. But also, I'm in a, such an adjustable mode that anything that happens, I can have the best reaction or the best response. So it, it's, not, it's not true that mm -hmm. I will lose by becoming my authentic self. Actually, I will gain. I, I will be a loser forever if I'm not able to do that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is something that has to be understood, which is, I think, keeping many people away from experiencing the true self. So how do I get back to my sincere, my authentic self? And how do I put it in practice in my day-to-day -day life? How do I, if I am working, if I am interacting with people, yeah. if I'm going about my daily chores where I have all sorts of situations coming up, yeah. how do I maintain that sense yourself? So, so you, can imagine, like, uh, you can imagine, like you can imagine you sitting, the real self sitting in the center of a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So there you are sitting in the center. Here's your family, here's your work, here's your, you know, your relationship with the community, here's your friends and so on. All of the things of your life mm -hmm. are around you. Now, typically, because we don't know this central core self, which we really are, it's like it doesn't exist. So what happens, we just jump from one thing to the other. Family work, family work, family, visit friends, family work, <laughs> family work, visit some, you know, go to the doctor, family work, family work, uh, you know, have some relaxation, go to the supermarket, you know, 
and we're just jumping around from one thing to the other and, and you know, quickly putting on whatever mask we need for that circumstance. And in that, we lose a lot of our energy because it's much more complicated to live like that. But if I know that I'm this central core being, the self in the middle of all of these things that I have to do in my life, from there, I come out, I interact, okay, my family's there, so I come out of that inner self and I interact with them, go back. Now I'm at work, I come out, do what I have to do, work, come back. So this sort of movement from the deep self to the circumstances and back again is much more economical, much less time consuming, much less energy consuming than just living your life anyway, mm -hmm. any old how. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very uh, empowering to be able to do that. And you think less and you think better mm -hmm. and you feel great. Uh, so you've given a good example that um, you know, we're always oscillating between different family or work or, you know, putting on different masks. But hardly do we take the time to go back to the center and experience our authentic self. And if we experience that and come from that space into, uh, you know, whatever may be my work or family, in, in that case, I will be strong to face anything which is happening. And I really don't need any mask at that time. That's what no. I understand. No, you don't. Yeah. Really, you don't. In fact, people will feel, if you are authentic, people will feel most at ease because what's happening is that when you have created that consciousness, it helps others, whoever is around you, to be affected to also come back to their deeper consciousness, and even though they take, may not know what it is. And to take their masks off too. Yeah, you will disarm everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, a, like a child. Mm -hmm. Doesn't a child disarm people mm -hmm. because they're authentic? Mm. And if you ask the question, uh, if there's a whole lot of people, who is the most authentic person in the room? It will be a six-month-old baby because there's no ego, right? Mm -hmm. the, per the person just is what they are. Mm -hmm. There's no masks. There's no layers on top of that. And, you know, that innocence and purity is there. So what happens as we grow older, that in innocence and purity is buried. It doesn't stop existing. It's just buried by a whole lot of other information. And so it's not that my real authentic self has disappeared. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's been buried mm -hmm. by other things and other considerations. Mm -hmm. So I have to unbury it, right? Mm -hmm. Excavate. It's a very well, um, you know, given example. You know, another thing just on top of my head, it comes that um, many times people say that I don't have to be authentic all the time. Sometimes I can fake it. I mean, somewhere I can fake it. For example, I can be a little tactful. Um, so is that okay? Can uh, being tactful instead of being blunt? Because if I don't like a situation, if I don't like a person or something, and I'm, and I'm a genuine person, I'm authentic, so I can't say that I like it. But if I say I don't like it, it's like being harsh or blunt. So uh, can I be a little tactful? What is your take on that? In such a situation, how to be genuine and authentic? You can't, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you see, if you are trying to avoid reality and truth, in the end it won't help you. So if you say, oh, I'll, I'll be tactful so, because I don't want to hurt the feelings, there shouldn't be even that sort of thought mm -hmm. if you're really authentic. Mm -hmm. And author authentic, real self will never cause harm, never. Mm -hmm. So when people say, <laughs> let me be frank with you, I'm really being sincere, but you see the other person just <laughs> folding up and sort of, oh, please stop, I don't <laughs> want to listen to this. That's not real sincerity. Mm -hmm. It's a, just another mask. Mm -hmm. So if I'm really authentic, I will never harm anyone's feelings. Even while I'm sharing the reality. If I'm sharing something which is hurtful, mm -hmm. I'm not real myself. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. I have to, if I'm really authentic, the real self, mm -hmm. the real soul, I didn't even perceive something that would, you know, that was wrong. That's a deep lesson for us.
Mm -hmm. So it's just another level of masks, actually. If I'm trying to, you know, let me get around it, let me be tactful, let me, you know, be uh, diplomatic. Just, mm -hmm. I've taken off some gross masks, but I'm still there with some subtle ones. Mm -hmm. Some nice, shiny, subtle masks, which yeah. are easy, which are difficult even to detect uh, within while you're yeah. checking. So um, that's a very beautifully uh, put examples. And, uh, you know, you've really given us uh, that authentic self is when we get back to the core and to connect um, with the unlimited one. And I'm sure that spirituality and everyday practice can only bring us to enable us to experience that reality every day. Um, and as we are drawing close to the conversation, I think it would be great if you could uh, get it into get us into a meditation to experience that authentic okay. self. So very quickly, you're sitting on your seat wherever you are. And are you aware of what's going on around you, the whole world of things happening around you? But go into the, you know, just become aware of being in the center of lots of things. And then become aware that you're also sitting in the center of your life. So in the same way you're sitting on a seat, you're sitting in the center of your life. So go to the center and see yourself as a shining star. A, a, a conscious being, a being of conscious energy, and just remain in that awareness. Now around you, there's your family, there's your work, there's all sorts of things, all, part, all of the things that make up your life. There are relationships, there are roles, there are responsibilities. But you're in the center of your existence. And you're remembering that, in fact, you are this peaceful, loving being, the child of the Supreme, just the child of the one who is the benefactor. So basically, your nature is also benevolent. So just sit in the center of your whole network of people and objects and radiate benevolence. And that will, the fact that you are in that state, peaceful, stable, that has an impact on your whole network in real time. You know, you are helping the whole network just becoming by becoming who you really are. So stay like that for a few more moments and come back. I think um, it's a very beautiful experience and I'm sure everyone who's done that um, of the viewers would experience that coming back to the center and just realizing the true self can have an effect on the whole, the way you're feeling now and surely it would um, go to the, to our work and friends. And uh, it's important that we do it every day and from time to time to make it a reality because I think we've been doing the other things so much that this reality has sort of gotten hidden with the fake things. So, you know, as the word discover says, discover, take off the cover. Mm -hmm. We have to take off all of the things that cover us and just be who we really are. Thank you, Brother Ken, for this wonderful conversation, for giving us the experience of our authentic self and hope we make it every day. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.